What's going on guys? So today we're going to look at MSI Z170A Crit Gaming Motherboard. MSI themselves is actually nice enough to actually provide me with a Crit Gaming Motherboard. Of course, as it's Skylake CPU and even some Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM. So a big, big, massive thank you for actually MSI providing these parts today for this video. Now this is actually the first time I'm actually going to be able to get my hands on and use Z170 and of course Skylake. So I'm actually quite excited and hopefully I can do some testing in a couple of days. But for today's video, we're actually going to be looking at the overall features of this motherboard, the current design and layout. So of course, let's get started. So of course this is MSI's new crit game motherboard of course on Intel's new Z170 chipset featuring LGA 1151 socket which supports of course Skylake CPU and of course DDR4 RAM. The motherboard itself has some nice impressive features considering this is a gaming budget motherboard costing only £113 or 150 US dollars. The motherboard itself comes in a nice white and black theme and it's really nice to actually see a motherboard today what's not red and black. This looks very similar to the Z97 crit game motherboard and will be a appeals to obviously people looking for a white and black theme. The PCB itself comes in a nice matte black which is always a thumbs up and the white bits itself seems to be actually painted on. The motherboard itself is actually gaming certified, it's great to know if you're actually a PC gamer out there and of course if you wish to overclock this motherboard you can always use MSI's gaming app to make it nice and simple and actually monitor what's going on in game. The motherboard itself actually is compatible with Windows 10 if you wish to actually upgrade, I actually still need to upgrade to Windows 10 myself. The motherboard actually supports two-way SLI and three-way crossfire which is perfect to know if you actually want to use the multi-card setups for gaming and also it actually works great and is actually certified for the actual use of steel series products so if you've actually used such as a mouse or headset by steel series it'll actually work really really well with this motherboard the motherboard itself also comes with DDR4 boost which pretty much helps the memory signal stay pure by maximizing the performance and of course saveability by 1.6 times. And it's actually done this by isolating the memory circuitry from the rest of the components which is, as you can see in the picture a nice thing to have. Of course it has their game boost as well as part of their click fire BIOS so while you're in the BIOS itself you can actually click that button and get 1.2 faster performance. The motherboard actually features a gaming LAN on this motherboard so you should get lower latency and while you're actually playing your face game it should prioritize that game over the other background tasks which is also a pretty good thing to have of course it comes with that audio boost free so of course while you're gaming you should get that crystal clear sound you should actually hear the enemy before they hear you and of course the core comes in emi shielded coating so you know you get great quality from that the motherboard itself is a certified military class 5 now so you get the high quality components and of course then titanium chokes around the actual cpu socket for longer lifespan of course higher temperatures the actual motherboard comes with USB 3.1, Generation 1 and Generation 2, of course Generation 2 is 10 gigabits per second, of course Generation 1 is 5 gigabits per second. So looking inside the box, of course you get your quick user guide if you're not sure how to fit a CPU and RAM. You get one CD disc with actually, of course all MSI drivers on it, but you should always download the latest version anyway, so this disc is pretty much useless. You get one quick gaming user guide where it's nice to actually know everything about the motherboard and of course how to set stuff up. You get one SLI bridge if you actually choose to have an SLI setup. AMD is not actually required a cable anymore. You get two SATA cables, an angled one and a straight one, so you need to buy more cables if you actually wish to have more hard drives, etc. You get one black IO shield but unfortunately has no back pattern on it which is not end of the world but I think I'd like to actually have seen. You get a nice thank you card so that's always the positive that MSI is thank you for buying them and of course you can use the link to actually register your motherboard. And of course you get some nice SATA cables which is a nice touch actually because if you have more uh, hard drives you can actually label each one up so next time you're working on your actual computer you know which hard drive does what. So having a quick look at the layout of the motherboard itself, this motherboard has five PWM fan connectors nicely spread around the motherboard itself, which all can be controlled using the total fan control to actually control the fans. And the two most important headers are actually the CPU header one and two, which is in the top right corner. Now to the left side of this, you have your eight pin CPU power connector, which is your additional place to see that connector today. Now below this more in the center, you have your LGA 1151 socket, AKA Skylight, where again is your additional place to see that. To the right side of the motherboard, you have your 24 pin power connector and below that you have a USB 3.1 connector of course you can connect your USB 3.1s from your case there. Now a nice little feature as well on this motherboard just above that 24 pin power connector you have an EZ 
debug LED light to actually illuminate one of the three lights to indicate which fault is present on your motherboard. If it won't boot, so you have a problem with CPU, DRAM, or video card, actually illuminate and let you know so you can actually get on to fixing it. It's a nice little feature. Of course, to the left there, you have your four DIMM slots, which supports up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, of course, from speed to 21 megahertz or up to 36 megahertz. And of course, you have the isolated memory circuitry, so you should get great performance from your RAM on this motherboard. And then below the actual LG 1151 socket, you have your Turbo M.2 port, of course, 32 gigabytes per second, and also supports, of course, the Turbo U.2 host card. The motherboard itself does have three PCI Express 3.0 16x slots on the actual motherboard itself. Now, if you actually decide to run a single card setup, it actually supports 16x mode. If you want a dual card setup, it supports 8x 8x mode. If you want a triple card setup, it supports 8x 8x4 mode. So taking a closer look at the steel armor itself on the PCI Express slot, this is simply there to prevent damage to the actual PCI Express slot itself and seems to be a standard now on all Z170 type motherboards. Of course, if you actually decide to rage quit one day and whip your graphics card out and actually shove it straight through the monitor, at least you know your PCI Express slot will be okay. Of course, not forgetting the actual PCI Express X1 slots, you have three of these. So if you decide to actually install a wireless card or a Google sound card, you've got many options to choose from there. Of course, next to that, of course you have your battery and next to that you have your clear uh, CMOS um, connector so you actually bridge these together well obviously clear your CMOS if you wish to and of course next to that you have your intrusion switch if you actually wish to connect that up coming left to actual PC Express slots you have your audio boost 3 where it's like a great sound chip of course it has the isolated circuit as well and of course overall does give great sound now coming right over to the right side of the motherboard we have our SATA ports and of course at the bottom there's SATA Express now I'm not actually sure why MSI decided to have these sticking up because personally when you have it plugged in it looks a bit messy and you can't wrap it around the back and I like to actually wrap it around the back out of the way and of course when the second graphics card in as well because it's sticking up it'll actually interfere and it'll be a bit squished and I'm not actually sure why the how they'll do this but that is probably the worst thing about the board. So of course, coming to the bottom of the actual motherboard itself, we have that SATA Express connector at the bottom. Next up, we have two USB 2.0 connectors, of course, if you have USB 2.0 uh, actual interfaces on your case itself. Of course, next up, we have your front panel connector, of course, for your reset switch and turn the PC on itself. We have a TMP module connector. Well, I'm not really sure what this actually does, but I'm going to look into it. And next to that, we have a system fan and, of course, a front audio connector if you want to wish to plug your headphones into the case audio itself. And then one thing what really intriguing about this the actual motherboard, well, I've never seen it before on any motherboard before, next to the actual audio connector was this little... Uh, four dots what we've actually won and this actually means that it's one layer thick and actually quite intrigued that it has this and I've never seen this before on a motherboard. So looking at the rear I/O of the motherboard itself, of course you get two USB 2.0 ports, of course with that PS2 port. A lot of gamers still like to use these to connect their motherboards and mouses up. Of course you get a DVI-D connector, well I'm pretty much shocked about this because you should never use onboard graphics anyway for gaming. You get two USB 3.1 generation 2 ports, of course 10 gigabits per second, so you get ultra fast speed. You get four USB 3.1 generation 1 ports, of course 5 gigabits per second. You get the HDMI port, while I'm pretty, again, pretty much stupid because you should never use onboard graphics for gaming you get that ethernet of course intel i219 ethernet line of course using their gaming line so you get that lower latency and of course you get dedicated audio jacks to connect obviously up to to use audio boost free to have great sound while gaming so there we go guys, that was a look at the overall design and layout and the features of the motherboard. I got a safe £113, this motherboard does really pack a punch, considering I'd believe this to be actually a budget gaming motherboard. Of course it comes with their Audio Boost 3, so you actually get that great sound quality while you're gaming. Of course SATA Express and M.2 support, you get USB 3.1 Generation 1 and 2. Of course SLI and Crossfire uh, support as well if you're actually into multi-card setups. And of course you get a gaming what is quite important I would say if you're actually online gaming for optimized 
actual game over the background tasks and of course the lowering latency so that's actually a nice feature to have and overall though the board looks fantastic a lot of people are into black and white builds now so this motherboard will appeal to them as well if you're actually looking for that kind of board not everything was great about this board though i'm not sure why the how they decide to actually put the SATA port sticking up though and of course SATA express this person would actually piss me off it was in my system i like them at the side so i can wrap it around plus this motherboard if you have the SATA cable and actually go that way first then loop over so interfere of course with the second card so not actually sure what they was thinking about that but again that's not the most thing about it though because overall the board still is fantastic considering it's only 113 pounds under the US dollars so that's all I have for today so of course please leave a comment on what you think about this board of or if you have any questions about the board itself I've actually tried to answer the best I can a big big thank you to MSI today for providing this more board of course Skylake and of course the RAM I can't wait to actually get it in the system and test it against the 4470k to actually see the performance dish and i'm quite looking forward to that so of course guys please leave a thumbs up and a thumbs down do what the hell you want i always uh, trust your opinions guys and of course this may even come as a giveaway as well in the future i'm not actually sure yet but i'll let you know if it does but it may come a giveaway on the channel so if it does i'll let you know but as always guys that's all i have for today so as always i'll catch you next time to